Hello guys, Pizza Lake with here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this amazing professional photo slideshow in Premiere Pro without using any plugins. So, without wasting more time, let's go to my screen and show you step by step what you have to do. First, I will open Adobe Premiere Pro. Then I'm gonna go down to the project panel. Then I'm gonna click with the right button with the mouse and go to new item and create sequence. I'm gonna use 1080 by 30 frames DCLR sequence and I'm gonna click on OK. But also you can change the name of it and I will change it to slideshow. And I'm gonna click OK. After we created the timeline, the next thing I will do is to upload the images that I'll be using for this live show. I'm going to click twice with the left button of the mouse and I'll select the images that I would like to apply. Once you select them, you click on open and this will upload them to your project panel. Then I'm going to drag them straight away to the timeline and zoom in so we can see better what's going on into the timeline. So once you apply them, you can see that the size of the images, it's not the same as the frame size. And to fix that, I'm going to select all of them, click with the right button of the mouse and go to scale to frame size. But now you can see that there is black space on both sides. But to fix that, I'll go back to image number one click on it and go up to the effect control panel, go to scale and scale it up like that. And unfortunately, we have to go to all of the images individually so we can scale them up to the right frame size like that. And I'm going to go to the third one. And this could be really annoying, especially if you have a big project and let's say you've got 30 or 40 images in this project, then it's pain in the neck. So now once we finish with scaling the images, I'm going to select all of them, hold Alt and the left button of the mouse and make a duplicate of all these images. Then I'll click on this eye icon and I'm going to toggle it so it won't be visible. And once we've done that, I'm going to go to video track number one, select image number one and go down to effects by clicking on these little arrows. But if you can't see the effects over there, you can go up to window and from here you can select effects. Once we select effects, I'm going to type down Gaussian, Gaussian blur. I'm going to go down, grab it and apply it to the first image. Then I'm going to go back to the effect control, go down to Gaussian blur and increase the blurriness up to, let's say, 40 5%. Then I'm going to go back to the effect control panel and type down noise. I'm going to grab the noise and grain effects and also apply it. Then I'm going to increase to, let's say, 4%. And once we've done with this, I'm going to again select the image, go select the Gaussian blur and noise, press Ctrl and C, select all these three images and press Ctrl and V. So like that, instead of doing it individually for every image, we applied it at the same time to the rest of those images, which saves time. So once we've done that, I'm going to untoggle the track output and go back to video track number two, select the first image. And now we're going to scale down the image so we can see the bloody background behind it. To scale down the image, you can go up to effect control and up to motion and from there to scale. Then I'm going to scale it down just like that and I'll create a keyframe. Then I'm going to go a little bit backwards and scale it further down like that. Once we've done that, I'm going to select the first keyframe, the right button of the mouse, and then I'm going to select ease in. Then I'm going to grab the second keyframe and ease out. After that, I'm going to move the first keyframe to the end of the photo and the second keyframe to the beginning of the photo. And by creating those keyframes, we get this smooth animation, which looks pretty cool. So once we're done with that, I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to press Ctrl and C. Then I'm going to select the rest of the images and I'm going to press Ctrl and V. And by doing this, we applied the same scale and the same keyframes to the rest of the images, which again, it saves us plenty of time. 
The next step will be to create white frame around the images. And to do this, I'm going to go back to the effect control panel and type down radio shadow. So I'm going to click on it and drag it to the first image into the second video track. So I'm going to scroll down and go to radio shadow. And from here, I'm going to change the color from black to white. And then I'm going to go to opacity and push it up to 100%. But as you can see right now, we've got only a white background on the both sides. And to change that, I'm going to go and click on resize layer. And by clicking on it, we're going to have a white background to the whole image. So now it's uneven and we have to even up. So I'm going to go to projection distance and make it down to let's say four then i'm gonna go to the light source and move this to the right and as you can see it gets better okay then i'm gonna go to that and drag it down as well and tada now it looks perfect so after we've done with the radio shadow we have to apply a drop shadow so i'm gonna go back to effect control panel and type down drop shadow I'm gonna click on it and apply it again to the first image I'm going to scroll down to drop shadow and we're going to keep a black color but this time i'm going to increase the distance so i can see where is the shadow by that i'm going to move the angle of it and it will be 208 degrees which is perfect and i'm going to go down to softness and increase it to 48. so once we've done that we're going to go first to radio shadow and then select drop shadow and then hold ctrl and c and again i'm going to select the rest of the images and press ctrl and v and like that rest of the images have this white frame and black shadow it looks already really cool but i want to make it even better and to do this i'm going to go back to the effect control panel and type down 3D. I'm gonna go and select the basic 3D and I'm gonna apply it to the first image. And I'm gonna move the cursor around three seconds and 14, 15 frames. I'm gonna go down to the 3D effects. And from here, we can swivel and tilt the image. So I'm gonna go to four and minus three to tilt. And also I'm gonna create a keyframes like that i'm gonna select both of them click with the right button with the mouse and ease in then i'm gonna move the cursor backwards and this time it's gonna be minus three to swivel and four for tilt so that's gonna be our second keyframes which i'm gonna ease out then i'm gonna grab them and move them to the beginning of the image and also i'm gonna grab the first keyframes and move them to the end of the image so we can create this 3d animation which looks amazing for this slideshow so to apply to the rest of the images we're going to do exactly the same that we've been doing in the last few minutes i'm going to select basic 3d control and c and then i'm going to select the rest of the images and control and v and like that we have applied the 3d effects to all of the images now after we apply the 3d effects it won't be a slideshow if we don't apply the slide effect so to do this i'm gonna go back to the effect control and type down slides from there i'm gonna go to video transition and find the slide effects and apply it to the second video track and then i'm gonna grab it again and apply it to the first video track so make sure that you apply the slide effects on both images i'm gonna do exactly the same with the rest of the images like that and once we apply the effects we can click on it and from over there you can see that there is a small arrows we can change the angle of the effect so for example if i click this little arrow over there it will come from north to south and i'm going to do the same with the second slide effect onto the second image so once we have applied the slide effect let's see what we've done and with that i will conclude this video if you want to see more tutorials in premiere pro you can check the videos at the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed and if you did so, hit that like and subscribe button so you can help my channel with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.